Hello everybody. Welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews today. Let's take a walk and go see what's in the fridge today. Hey guys, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. Look at here. Fat Heads Hop Juju. I was so blown away by yesterday's beer that we did from Fat Heads Brewery, their IPA. I decided to go ahead and do the other one that Patrick sent me. This is uh, sent to me from Patrick. Uh, this is their Imperial IPA, their Hop Juju. And he told me in the beer mail package that... Uh, he contacted them because it didn't have a bobbing date on it, and they told him it was a production uh, error on this beer, that they didn't get that on there. And it's a seasonal beer. They don't do it all year long, and that this was a fresh bottle that he had his hands on that I have my hands on now. Uh, Patrick, thanks again, brother, for sending me these uh, these two beers. Actually, he sent me two each of these, so I have one to review for you guys and, and one to enjoy. And uh, what I like about it, yesterday's beer... The Imperial is a green cap with the fat heads label, and the Imperial is a yellow cap with the fat heads head on there. Looks a lot like mine, except they don't have a beard. You got a big, big fat head like I do. Takes a five gallon bucket for a helmet. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, other than not having the bottling date on there, and they did explain that it was a production error, and so I assume. Uh, all the rest of the beers have bottling dates on them, and this this one, something happened when they bottled this one, and the uh, the dating machine didn't do it. So I know this is a fresh beer. So this is a, a nine percent uh, ABV by alcohol beer, and one hundred IBUs. So this is a big beer. This is an imperial. This is a or a double, if you will, guys. All right, let's go over to uh, commercial description on this beer. Bordering on the supernatural hop juju is the perfect name for this beer as the magical hops cast their spell with intense dank aromas of pine citrus and a big aggressive bitter flavors of pine grapefruit and orange and that's what the regular IPA had in it so this is going to be a little more intense. Nicely balanced by a very sturdy malt backbone and a hint of alcohol. So they're telling you right there in the description that it, that it is a little bit boozy. So we're going to find out here how boozy it is. It's a 2013 G, GABF a gold medal winner. And that's the Great American Beer Festival that they have in Denver, Colorado every year. A very prestigious award, if I may add that. The food pairing for this beer is your typical IPA. IPAs and your double IPAs are the same food pairings. Except, just remember, this is a bigger IPA. It's a double or an imperial, if you will. Uh, it goes with your really strong dishes. But, I mean, just like I said yesterday, pizza and burgers and chops and chicken and, and all those stronger dishes go well with your IPAs. And if you're into the doubles, I mean, and just like I said yesterday, if you like to, I mean, if, if you like to eat pasta with your double IPAs, by golly, do it. I mean, there's nothing set in stone there. You can eat what you want to and drink what you want to, if, as long as you like them both together. Uh, I mean, if you like ice cream with your double IPA, do it. I mean, not something that I would do, but I mean, if it blows your hair back, by golly, do it. Don't be limited to what they say you should do. I mean, if you like it with something else, do it. That's what I say. All right, food pairings, like I said, cuisines, barbecue, cheese, your peppery, uh, pepper jack, Monterey, blue, sharp, cheddar, your more stronger cheeses, gorgonzola, limburger, meat is game, grilled meat, and salmon, and just about anything off the grill goes well with this as far as I'm concerned. Glassware is a sniffer, tulip, oversized wine, oversized wine glass. I've got the double glass for this imperial version where I used the pint glass yesterday. And this is an imperial, and since it's 9%, it can be cellared. If you find it a little too boozy, cellar it for a while. I mean, put a year on it and then taste it, and, 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 or a two. Uh, but just, re, just re, 
you know, remember that you're going to lose some of that hot profile as you sour it, but you'll, the booziness will subside and, it'll, and it will mellow out with the other flavors and become more complex and it'll, it'll get more malty uh, as time goes on and the hops will fade a little bit. So we're going to find out here and if it, if it is too boozy, I may sour the other one that he sent me uh, for a little while, but I, I don't find that to be probably going to happen. So uh, that's all we need to talk about, so as much as I enjoyed yesterday's beer, let's dive into this one. So, let me see if I can get this cap off without bending it up, because it will end up on the fridge downstairs. I like the, the Fathead logo on these caps. Into the glass, down the center this time, guys. We're not going to get any head on this bad boy. Straight down the center, about an eighth of an inch of finger of head there. Wow, I can smell it already. Wow. Over to the light, it is uh, got a slight chill haze on it, but I can see the bulb through it. It is very orangey, very tangerine color, uh, pretty much just like yesterday, except it's a tad cloudier than the single IPA. Yeah, the Juju is a little cloudier than the Headhunter, so. Looks very good in a glass for a double IPA. Let's get a whip. Yeah, now right off the bat, you can tell this is a much bigger beer than what we had yesterday. Consider considerably more maltier than what we had yesterday. Still, I'm getting the pine, the grapefruit, uh, the pineapple, uh, but a lot more malt in this beer to go with that. When it comes up to like 9%, uh, that means they use more grain to brew this, so it makes it more malty. And, and usually you use more hops in there to try to balance that out. It smells very good in the glass. I mean, it's got all the flavors of a double IPA, and as blown away as I was by yesterday's beer from these guys. Let's see if I am on this one. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Patrick. Thank you, brother. Piney, just like I said yesterday, piney, grapefruit, pineapple, oranges, mango, a nice maltiness, not overly bitter on the back end, very balanced beer, just a hint more of alcohol, but not boozy to me. I would not sell her this beer. Shall, should I say or shall I say this beer is just as awesome as yesterday's very tasty you could get in trouble with this beer if you was to get a six pack of this and sit down now I don't know if it's producing a six pack or a four pack once you get into the nine percenters I'd like to put that in a four pack instead of a six pack and charge you the same price world we live in and it costs a lot more to brew a nine percenter than it does a six or a seven percenter beer more malt, more hops, so uh, the cost of making the beer goes up, so uh, the, <laughs> they compensate that by dropping two of the beers and giving you a four pack instead of a six pack. Patrick, you made some comments in yesterday's beer review of what the Headhunter costs uh, per bottle or for, I would say the Headhunter would be in a six pack, I'm not sure of that because like I said they're not available here. And this one, the, the Juju, uh, if it's in a four pack or a six pack, and what a bottle costs. So you might want to leave some comments there. But this one's pretty damn awesome, guys. So before I sit here and drink it all in front of you, like I almost did yesterday, we'll let the other half taste it, and we'll sip on it for a little bit and come back and do the final chug. I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. Got just a little bit left here. Been sipping on this probably about 30 minutes or so. Now that it's warmed up a little bit, <clears throat> there is a more alcohol in this beer than it was when it was cold. Of course it's a nine percenter. And there's a little bit more bitterness on the back end now than it was when it was cold. Uh, not quite as balanced as it was when it was first cold out of the bottle. To me, just my opinion, 
Plus, I know this is a fresh beer because uh, Patrick uh, called the brewery and they told him about the bottling problem with the uh, date code being stamped on it. But I know that. And he knows that, and they know that, but if you walk into a store and you see this bottle, or a six-pack or a four-pack hours packaged on the shelf, and you pick one up and look, and it doesn't have that bottling date on there, you're going to say, I don't know how old the beer is, so you're going to set it back up on the shelf. So, even though that I know that it's a fresh beer, and he knows, and they know that it's a seasonal beer and it's fresh, the consumer still needs to have that, that information, so... Uh, that would be the only derogatory thing I would say about not having that actually on the bottle itself and having a little bit more bitterness and alcohol on the back end now that it's warmed up than it did when it was cold. But still an awesome beer. Definitely a well-made beer. Still an A beer as far as I'm concerned. Final chug. Awesome nose on this. Still delicious. Wonderful beer. Guys, I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10 today. Still a very well made beer. That close to the 10. That close to the 10. So, uh, I enjoyed this. I'm looking forward to drinking the other two that he sent me to match these two. The Head Hunter and the Juju. Uh, both awesome beers. Uh, Patrick, thanks a bunch for sending them to me. I will enjoy the other two for sure. All right, guys, let's see what everybody else thinks about this. Let's go over to Beer Advocate first. And Beer Advocate, they actually give it a better grade than they did the Headhunter. This is a 99 from them, which is a world-class also rating. Would not argue with that a bit. If I was putting a number rating on this, it would be a 98 or a 99. So we're pretty much in agreement with these guys over there. Let's go over to Rate Beer. Rate Beer is not quite as generous on this particular version as it was the Headhunter. But still awesome numbers. Overall, it's 99 and 98 in the style. So that's, that's where I would put it, between a 98 and a 99 if I was putting a number on this one. So guys, it's definitely worth picking up if you can get your hands on one of these. Wish I could get my hands on these regularly. I would drink more of this. You'd see more of these in the fridge. So definitely worth trying if you can get your hands on it. So that's where it is tonight, guys. 9 out of 10. Uh, everybody's in agreement, Rate Beer, Beer Advocate, and myself on this one too. Uh, if you've had it, give me some comments back on this one. Whether you liked it or didn't like it, hit that like button. Always hit that like button. Rate, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Let's go see what's in the fridge tomorrow. We've got our fingers crossed. Maybe we'll get us another 9 or a 10 tomorrow. See you then.